This morning we'd like you to turn with us to 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter and the 14th verse that we might deal not with David but with Saul. And in this 14th verse we find that Samuel the prophet is speaking to Saul concerning Saul's disobedience to God. And so Samuel declared unto him, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Now, I am certain that God could accomplish his works upon this earth with angels or in many various ways. But God has chosen to use men for whatever purpose or plan that he has. God could speak to us directly, but God has chosen to speak to us through men. God could touch us directly, but he has chosen to touch us through men. For his own reason, God has chosen to use men to do his work upon the earth. And thus, God is always searching and looking for men to do his work. God desires to work in this world today. And as we look at this world today, we surely recognize the need that this world has for God to work. We are living in a sick world. Again this week we've been shocked at the sickness of man's mind. As we read of these two men who they think may be guilty of the deaths of over 30 young girls who perhaps plotted to kill over 500 and this on top of the hillside strangler that we haven't really recovered from in our minds and the shock and the horror. And we wonder how can man's minds be so sick? What we find... that not only is man's mind sick, but man's bodies are sick. Sick minds are a tragedy in our society. Sick bodies, the result of sin. Now I don't mean that you know, if you have a cold today, that means you sinned last week. Now, you know, an immediate cause and effect. But because of sin, there is disease, there is sickness in the world. God didn't intend for us to have all these sicknesses and diseases. They came as the result of man's sin. But there is also sick air that we've got to breathe, sick water that we've got to drink. All of the wells that they're finding in Los Angeles now with this chemical TCE, a carcinogenic. The whole system's becoming so polluted. The whole world is so sick that unless God does work, there is no hope for survival. For we find a sick society 
morally, spiritually, going downhill. And we see that there is a danger of man destroying himself. The United States needs the work of God. We've gained the reputation as the ugly American. We are hated almost universally. We have a sick government. Unless God works, our very future is threatened. For over 10 years ago, Russia promised that they were going to crush us, and they now have the capacity to do it. We need God to work. But God works through men, and God is seeking men through whom he can work. But when there is no man, then God does not work. Now other nations have been destroyed and other nations have gone down for the lack of a man. God was talking to Ezekiel the prophet concerning the captivity of Israel when they were taken by Babylon and the destruction of the nation. And God in explaining it to Ezekiel the prophet said, And I sought for a man among them who would stand in the hedge, who would fill in the gap, but I found none, and therefore their judgment came. God was wanting to save them from the impending judgment. God was looking for a man he could use that would stand there in the gap and fill in the hedge, but finding none. The judgment came and Israel was destroyed. God is searching for men today that will stand in the gap, who will fill in the hedge, lest judgment come and destroy our nation. I think of that poem, For the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For a one of the horse, the rider was lost. For a one of a rider, the battle was lost. For the want of a battle, the kingdom was destroyed. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. And all for the want of a man, a man that God could use Many nations, many kingdoms have been lost. But what kind of a man is God looking for? God said to Saul that he was looking for a man after his own heart. Now this was being told Saul at the place of Saul's rejection by God. As we look at this story, Saul had been fighting against the Philistines. And now the Philistines had gathered a huge army. And Saul went down to Gilgal because Samuel the prophet said, I'll meet you there in seven days. And so Saul came to Gilgal with the people and the people gathered around him and they were trembling because the scripture declares that the Philistines had come down and encamped against them there. The day, of what was, the day had come, which was appointed by Samuel, and Samuel didn't show up. And the people were getting nervous, and Saul was getting nervous, and finally Saul said, Bring the sacrifice, and I will offer it to the Lord. And so Saul offered the sacrifice to God, something that he had no business doing. He was of the tribe of Benjamin, not the tribe of Levi. 
and offering the sacrifice of God, he was intruding into the office of the priest. He was disobeying the command of God that said only the Levite should offer sacrifices to the Lord. And thus, in his disobedience to God, offering of the sacrifice, before the offering was completed, Samuel came and he said, Saul, what have you done? And Saul said, well, I could see the people were getting upset and nervous and, and they started to be scattered. And so I forced myself because of the people and I offered the sacrifice to the Lord. And Samuel said, Saul, you have done foolishly for you have disobeyed the command of God. Now God would have established your kingdom, but because you have disobeyed, God is sought for a man after his own heart that he might do or obey the will of God. So Saul was rejected as God sought for a man. Now why was he rejected? Well, if you go back a little bit further in the chapter, back at the beginning of the chapter, the story goes like this. And Saul raised an army of 3,000 men in Israel. And he put one-third of the army under his son Jonathan, and he took two-thirds. And Jonathan smote the Philistines with a great slaughter, and Saul blew the trumpet in Israel, and the people thought that Saul had smitten the Philistines. His son was doing the battle. He was taking the glory a pride began to develop in Saul's heart. He liked the women to come out with their tambourines and dances and sing, Saul has killed his thousands. And pride began to develop within his heart. God is seeking a man who will do the work of God without taking glory for the work. A man who will do the work of God in such a way that only God will receive the glory. As Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. Saul was rejected because he was a self-willed man. Rather than submitting to God, He'll do it his way. Rather than waiting for God and following God's plan, he'll inaugurate his own plan. Saul was impatient. He was rushing into areas where he had no business being, not waiting for the Lord. And thus, he was rejected. And God sought him a man after his own heart. Now, from the New Testament, we know that this man was David. In the 13th chapter of the book of Acts, verse 22, Paul, talking about David, declared, And God said, I have found David a man after my own heart. What does it mean to be a man after God's own heart? A man God can use. Well, number one, I can tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that you're a perfect man. David was far from perfect. You know, so many times we disqualify ourselves from God's service because of our imperfections. We think God only uses perfect people. But if God used only perfect people, he couldn't use anybody. David was far from perfect, and yet he was called a man after God's heart. It doesn't mean that he's a sinless man. David actually had his sins published in the bestseller in all the world. How would you like to have your sins all published, you know, in the world's bestseller? 
But his little escapade with Bathsheba, everyone knows about it. He wasn't a sinless man. But he was the kind of man when faced with his sin, repented rather than trying to offer excuses. And herein we see a vast contrast between David and Saul. When the prophet Samuel said to Saul, What have you done? Saul said, Well, the people, they, they were getting nervous and upset, and they forced me, and I forced myself to do it. And, and he was offering excuses. But a man who is good at making excuses is seldom good for anything else. Now, when David was faced with his sin, and the prophet said to David, David, thou art the man. David cried out unto God and said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. And David cried unto the Lord in repentance and in asking for forgiveness for his sin. So God isn't seeking a sinless man. But God is seeking that kind of man when faced with his guilt will confess it and repent of it in order that he might be used of God. God is looking for a man who will do his will. In fact, God said of David there in Acts, I have found David a man after my own heart who will do my will. You see, we have our own ambitions, our own goals, our own aspirations for our lives. And we are so busy trying to achieve our goals that we aren't willing to submit ourselves and our lives to God and to the will of God that He might accomplish His will in us. But David yielded his life to God and to the will of God, and thus he was called a man after God's heart because of his willingness to submit his will to God. David is a man after God's heart because David had a heart for God. Read the Psalms. Notice how he desired God. He said, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so pants my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for thee, O God, as in a dry and a barren land. And he speaks of his great thirst and hunger for God. And because he was a man after the heart of God, he was called a man after God's own heart. But David was called a man after God's own heart because he was a man that was zealous for God. If he saw a cause, he was ready to rise to the challenge. Actually, it is interesting. We usually think of David older than he is. Now, at this time when God said to Saul, I'm searching for a man after my own heart, the interesting thing is that David wasn't even born yet. God had quite a long search. It took him a long time to find a man after his heart. David was 23 years old when Saul died. Saul reigned 40 years in Israel. This particular happening took place in the second year of Saul's reign. So, God was searching for David 15 years before he was born. Looking for a man after... How, what difficulty God has in finding a man after his own heart. Now, when David was just 12 or 13 years old, too young to fight in the armies of Israel, his older brothers had all gone off to battle, and his dad called him in from watching the sheep. 
and said, David, I want you to go over to the battle and see how your brothers are doing. Find out how everything is going. Take some cheeses and raisins and all for the captains and some of the cookies for your brothers and bring back a report of how they're doing. Your mother wants to know if they've got enough blankets and they're getting enough food. So David came over excited as a 12-year-old boy would be to see his big brothers and to see the war against the Philistines. And as he was talking to his brothers and finding out how they were doing and all, suddenly he hears this big booming voice saying, If any of you are brave enough, come out and fight me. And David's brothers and the rest of the men began creeping towards their tents. David said, Where are you guys going? What's the matter? And his oldest brother Eliab said, Hey, runt, you better get back to your dad and back to those sheep before you get in trouble. He said, What do you mean? Didn't you hear that guy? He was defying God. You ought to go out and whip him. And his oldest brother said, Listen, I'm going to whip you, boy, if you don't go home in a hurry. <laughs> and David said, Wait a minute. Isn't there a cause? God's name is being blasphemed. He's just a 12-year-old boy, but here's a cause. He's zealous for God. He's one to, ready to rise for the cause of God. He's a man after God's heart, even though he's a lad, because he has such a zeal for the causes of God. And as he goes up against the giant who is insulted when he sees a small boy coming up against him, he said, am I a dog that you'd send a child out to me? And he said, you better go home, little boy. I'll chop you up and feed you to the birds. And David said, you have come against me with a sword and a spear, but I come against you in the name of the living God. And I'm going to chop you up and make bird meat out of you. <laughs> For you have defied the God of Israel. He was the kind of a man who trusted in God and in God's ability to defeat the greatest enemy. Had no fears because he knew that God was with him and he was fighting the causes of God. I have found David, God said, a man after my own heart. And God used David and through David delivered Israel out of the hands of all of their enemies and established a strong kingdom through him. God said, I have sought for a man after my own heart. And God today is seeking for men after his own heart. Men who will lay down their will to do God's will. Men who will have great confidence in the power of God working through them to defeat the enemy. Men who will have a great zeal for God. Men whose hearts are after God. For the nation and the world is perishing and shall indeed perish except God work and God works through men and God seeks men through whom to work. Shall we pray? Lord, we realize that you are looking throughout the entire earth to find men whose hearts are completely towards you. That you might show yourself strong and do your work in this needy world. God help us. We want to be that man. 
in Jesus name amen shall we stand years ago a man said to a young shoe clerk in Chicago the world has yet to see what God can do through one man who will totally yield his life to the Lord. That young shoe clerk said, I want to be that man. And God used Dwight Moody to reach two continents. God is looking for men whose hearts are completely towards him Men, after God's own heart, that he might show himself strong and do his work in this needy world today. As the prophet said, here am I, Lord, send me. Are you willing to be that man? Are you willing to be that person? Are you willing to commit yourself to God, laying down your will, your ambitions, your desires? The thing is, you see, if you live for your own ambitions and desires, it may look like it's all oh, so wonderful if I can only achieve. It's like cotton candy. It looks so delicious and so good, but there's no substance. Once you, it just dissolves. It's not, you know, just... You get to, you know, you start to get into it, and it's just nothing there, just a sweet taste, and it's gone. But it leaves you so thirsty. And following after your own ambitions and your own goals, it may seem like such a desirable, exciting thing, but there's no substance when you arrive. Maybe a sweet taste for a moment, but you find yourself still so thirsty. Because your life is not satisfied and not fulfilling. A man who will lay down his will. As Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. God is looking for such men today. I would encourage you, if you'd like to just give your life to the Lord, Go back and to the prayer room this morning and just say, Here I am, I, Lord. Send me. Who knows what God might have in mind for you to do in this sick world today. God wants to work, but he only uses people to do his work. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you. And may you just have the joy of walking with the Lord this week as he ministers his love and his grace to your life through Jesus our Lord.